Okay, so we're in video two, and we're just going to talk about grids. And what I'd like to do <coughs> in InDesign is just create a new document focusing on grids. So let's close this one up. We're not going to save it. Uh, I don't know why we have two of them, but we're not going to save this one either. Oh, I must have opened like 12 of them in my impatience. This is what happens to me in my life, my impatience. It's not a good thing. Okay. And we'll save this for later. So actually, one of the things in all of your design work for publication design is let's talk about grids. And thank you, Don, for sharing this with us. We appreciate it. So Don's done a few things here. He created um, columns in his layouts. And he has a spread. So what size page is this? 8.5 by 11? No. It's 7.5 by 5. OK. Um, well, not necessarily. It doesn't matter. You know what size menu you want. You may want a menu on a coaster, right? I mean, there's a beer thing. One of the grommet turn the rings, right? I don't know. Um, so you've created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 um, columns. And the space between a column is called a gutter. And that's spacing. Now, just because you created a 12-column grid is not a bad thing, because sometimes you'll create layouts that will have 12-column grid. So let's play with your 12-column grid just for the heck of it, because you did it for us. Okay? So I'm going to close. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to create a new document in InDesign. I'm going to use the specs you had, if I can remember, which was 7 wide, 5 high. And you set it up as 12 columns, and you created, I think you left it as a default gutter is my thing, is yeah. what I believe. And then what I want everybody to be familiar with is to make sure you always create bleeds on every publication you create. No matter what you do, create a bleed, and the default is an eighth of an inch, 0.125. And did I discuss what a slug is for you guys? Yes, I did. OK. <coughs> Anybody not know what a slug is? I, uh, a slug. Slug is where you put notes on the side of a publication. So if I wanted to give instructions to my print shop, I might create a two-inch slug, and um, which means this little blue area over here, see where I'm swinging my little cursor? That's where I could write a note. It wouldn't be in the print area. And I could say, I could create a print box here that says, um, please handle these with care and I will give you free guacamole <laughs> at my pricey restaurant. Do I have typos there? There. And all of you who spell like I do need to go to edit, I think it's where it's found, spelling, command I, check spelling, and fix it. Restaurant. Change. Done. Can't believe I smell guacamole right while I was typing so fast. Okay, so that's a slug. It's just notes. Okay, um, and I'll show you how it works. Now, one of the things that um, Don did is he created 12 columns, and he created specific size gutters. Now, traditionally, <clears throat> a .167 gutter is tiny, 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 and traditionally you're going to create columns of text like that where you can actually fit words in them. Um, but your columns are so small you're not going to get many words in them. So you might want to look at different publications and decide what feels like a column layout that feels okay to you. Now you can change it on your master pages which is probably the best place to change it. Um, so you can go to Layout, Margins, and Columns. And rather than 12, let's turn it into um, 4. And rather than the default gutter, let's turn it into um, 0.3125. I, I don't have gutters usually that are less than a quarter of an inch. And I'm a big gutter kind of girl. So I usually step it up a little. The other thing I also end up doing is I'm big into margins. 
I like breathability in things. Unless you want to create a design like this because you want to create noise. And there's a place for it. You know, this noisiness is fun. It's edgy, it's cool, it draws you in. Just know what you're designing for, okay? Um, Marianne's restaurant is not going to be like this. But your beer place might be. Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, so now we've got a grid. So now when you're creating a grid layout, you can choose to create a text box. I'm going to fill it with placeholder text. And here's our grid layout. This is 12-point type. Chances are most type you're going to have is like 9-point, and you always adjust your letting and maybe 14-point letting. So you can get real words in there, even if you could read Latin, right? And the other thing is, um, let me just select all this, copy, copy, paste, 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 paste. Okay, I've got lots of overflow. I can get on my selection tool, click my overflow box, click up here in the corner, and just by clicking, it should have created a column, the width of my column by default in InDesign. Click on my overflow box click here on my column, it created another column for me. Now the other thing about columns is just because I have a four column layout grid here doesn't mean I can't choose to do this, that I can't choose to um, let something be a two column spread because you still get that feeling of consistency right, in your layout. So when you start to lay things out, you also might decide that using your grid here might be where you create a highlighted box of, um, of a graphic, right? That's still a four-column layout. If, um, if I chose to do this, that's still a four-column layout. Right? It's still, um, let's just go to a preview. I mean, our normal mode. Oops, there we go. That's still a four column layout. You just chose to create a spread. And I think what I was trying to point out one day is you can use your um, grid layouts just to create continuity of page and predictability. But let's say you decide that you want to break your grid. Right now, that breaks your grid. And maybe that's because you have your crawfish claws climbing out of the grid layout and biting into the type. Is everybody familiar with uh, text wraps just while I'm on the topic of this? Anybody not? Any text wrap demo? Okay. So try different grid layouts. Focus on them. Um, understand that you could make um, these boxes, you know, we did some step and repeat before, right? And you can, this is still a four column grid layout, right? It just creates order and predictability to a page. So you can explore it. You can also just, for the sake of it, I prefer doing what I did before, which is making my own text columns like this, you know, one at a time. But you can also draw one big text box and just go to um, layout margins and columns for your text box. No, I'm doing this wrong. Sorry. It, go to type. Go to object text. Go to t object text frame options. Command B. And let me just fill this with placeholder text so you can see what happens. Fill with placeholder text. I can go to object text frame options, and I can click preview so you can see this increase the number of columns of my text box to four, increase my gutters to um, the same as my column guides, and I have a single text box that automatically creates its own columns. Okay, is that useful? All right, any questions? I just wanted to touch on tabs and grids because grids will give you order. I, I do suggest it. Okay. Um, then that being said, what I'd really like to do is um, stop with this and move on to critiquing. And so everybody gets their 
equal time. Should we start with Giancarlo since he's not here? And then we'll move on to who's in class. Okay, so Giancarlo, this is for you. We're going to play your video, Giancarlo, and hope that YouTube doesn't shut us down, right? Um, let's actually, let's, let's just look through Giancarlo's um, uh, design brief. And I'm going to let him talk about it because he does. I, I watched most of his video already. So here's his type studies. Let's just go back. He gave us the restaurant name and you know all the criteria that we asked for in the design brief and his competition. Um, and he gave us his cooler colors. So wake up, you guys, right? <laughs> and um, menu choices. Now, he used leaders. He aligned his decimal points, but he has no $300 guacamole, so we're not sure about the dollar signs, right? And then he did a Pinterest board, and if you don't, who's not familiar with Pinterest? I think I brought this up already. Pinterest is like the end all for gather, gathering images. So he's gathered a Pinterest board of things that feel like the essence of his um, of his taco shack. We're going to let him talk to us about it. So here we go. Hey, everybody. My name is Giancarlo. I'm taking GDP 215 online. Unfortunately, I'm unable to make the classes on Wednesday afternoons because of my work schedule. But Vicki and John have been kind enough to allow me to attempt to participate by creating these screencast-o-matic videos and uploading them to YouTube. So I apologize for not being able to be there in person, but hopefully this will kind of work. All right, here's a quick rundown of my menu design brief. I decided to take Vicky's advice and kind of have fun with this. So the idea that I came up with is a fictitious, completely over-the-top taco and tequila bar slash live music cantina called Tacos Chingon, which translates to badass tacos. And uh, the idea for this place is that it's it's more of a happy hour, late night, sort of live music vibe, but it'll have excellent, an excellent taco bar and a fresh Mexican food menu made with fresh ingredients daily. Economically priced, and will also feature an expansive tequila bar and tons of happy hour specials, lots of domestic imported beer and a, a happy hour uh, appetizers, things like that. Um, anyway, I thought an over-the-top sort of idea like this would be kind of fun to play with, just because the color palette would be so crazy. Um, lots of bright fluorescent colors like you'd see in a Tijuana tourist trap. Lots of neon beer signs, Dia de los Muertos artwork, uh, Luchador Mexican wrestling posters, black velvet, uh, dayglow paintings, that kind of thing, way over the top. It's like something you'd see out of a Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez movie, if I hadn't said that already. But anyway, so um, I went to Cooler and I found some really cool color palettes that people had already put together that I think would work really well for this project. And uh, put together a bunch of crazy fonts that I'll have to experiment with. Um, and started to put together a menu, although this is just a jumping off point. It's going to have to be way more expansive, obviously, if it's going to be an eight-page menu. But um, anyway, this, I guess, would be a good place to start. Um, oh, yeah, and I started by putting together a Pinterest board with a, just to kind of get the ideas flowing. And the vibe that you can kind of see here, lots of neon and whatever crazy stuff. But... Um, Anyway, hopefully um, that'll work. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I really appreciate your feedback. And look forward to hopefully seeing seeing you guys in class one of these days. Uh, thanks for listening, and talk to you soon. Okay. So this is kind of cool. We've never done this before. So, Giancarlo, we've never done this before in class. Um, all right, so... This man oh. isn't watching the game at a party right now. Uh-oh, this is going to be the thing that shuts us down, isn't it? No, it won't. <laughs>
Okay, let's see. So what I'd like to do now is pull up his design brief and let's pose for Giancarlo things that crossed your mind as you looked at his restaurant that might help support him develop his menu. Okay? Is that... So, <coughs> anybody got some initial thoughts for us? I like your idea. Okay, so Jimmy says he likes your idea. Shall I, can you come up here just and talk into this so I don't have to repeat I everything? You like the idea? <laughs> okay, so you like the screamy color stuff? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Um, who else has got some thoughts about it? Who else is doing Mexican? Laura's doing Mexican. And you're doing Mexican, Kevin. Yeah. Your, which is your Mexican restaurant? Remind me, please. Freebirds. Freebirds. That's right. Did you show us yours yet? Yours no. yet? No. Okay. And Freebirds is a burrito, like yes, burrito bar. Really so really okay. So their menu is going to be... Their, Freebirds has their menu on a wall. Yeah. Okay. And, um, but you're going to have to create a menu menu. Okay. It's surprising, right? Well, okay. So then, um, so what you can't hear Giancarlo is he's talking about Freebirds being harder than he thought it would be. How do you make eight pages out of it? Well, and what you need to do is not make a boring menu. You right. need to... I mean, think of the name of the company. It's it's Freebirds. Man, I can think of all kinds of things. I can, I can see flying burritos if they weren't so heavy. You know, burritos that wouldn't get off the ground because they're so packed, right? Um, that's kind of funny. That's that's kind of a funny little hook there. So let's let's come back to Giancarlo. So, um, quality food, fresh ingredients, lots of tequila. So he's going to need to create a logo for this. Um, what do you say? Qigong? Qigong. Qigong. What does that mean? Uh, badass. 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 And how do you say it again, Laura? Qigong. Qigong. It sounds like my daughter who's taking Qigong at her Chinese medicine school. So <laughs> it's hard for me to cross all these languages, right? Um, okay, so badass. So that that creates really fun logo thoughts, right? Badass tacos. Um, okay, so you get to have fun with your your uh, logo style. Um, I'd love to see, although you have a Pinterest page of of ideas. Mostly, what I see is that you grab lots of color. Let's look at this restaurant interior. So I want to see more Giancarlo in your Pinterest page. Restaurant interiors. He talked about decorating with Dia de los Muertes. He talked about decorating with what else? Wrestler what? posters. Wrestler posters. That was it. Right. right. Beer signs. And beer signs. Neon right. beer signs. Yeah. Right. So when you think of neon and bright colors and all that, you want to, I, I want to be able to see a place, a motif, because here's the Tao Sin. So I assume that's your neon, but that's very retro, right? The Tao Sin. And I don't feel like with these bright colors, it's retro. Do you guys? What's that uh, Mexican restaurant, forgive me, that has the bras hanging from the ceiling? What? Yeah, I know what, right? <laughs> no, it's in down, they have one in downtown Ventura, and they have it somewhere else. And it's um, front, it's got a huge bar. It's got fresh, um, it's very similar to what he described. Do you do it? Can somebody Google Main Street? Ventura Mexican food. And oh man, I should I should Google it. I right. Let's just do it. It's not sharky, is it? No. It's a restaurant. And it's called uh What is it? Amigos? No, not Amigos. Uh, Mexican food bar downtown. El Rey. There we go. El Rey Cantina. Let's go for it. 
You guys don't know this? Do they have one here? And it reminded me of what Giancarlo was describing. Okay, so here's, so, I mean, so that's obviously an ad that they have for their cantina. Talk about Neon Dia de los Muertes, El Rey Cantina. Let's see, let's see what our um, interior shot was. Let's go back, sorry. Um, here's what it looks like. Yeah. And yes, all those chandeliers, there's bras hanging from them. They must have cleaned up their act for the photo, right? And so here's some really fun ideas for what the environment looks like. They have um, graffiti art on the back wall. Uh, they have those little star light fixtures. It's, it creates the environment that I heard, anyway. And it's, a, and it's a hopping place. It's a hangout place. And it's inexpensive food, lots of bar, um, bar food. Oh, and there's rustling. So, man, we got it all covered, don't we? I guess they have a few beers. <laughs> so, and that's the environment. So what I want to see, Giancarlo, from you is more of a feeling of what the environment is and what's going on in the place. So start grabbing that on your Pinterest page, and that'll help define it. Plus, um, maybe as we see the logo come alive, here's the signage outside, that neon sign. Bless you. Um, anything else anybody wants to add to it? No? Um, the only other thing I want to add is, as I'm looking at this, your design brief is great. Um, I want to point out what a fan I am of margins. So here's his menu item with good margins. Here's his design brief with poor margins. Okay? What's more readable? And um, just thought I'd throw that out there for you guys. So keep that in mind for readability. Obviously, when you have screaming, shocking pink type and black type together, it's hard to read. But it's fun because it creates a mood, a personality, just like all the vibrant neon colors of um, Dia de los Muertes art. So any, anything else to add? Get that black interior off those dots. Get the black interior off the dots. Off the green dots. Oh, yeah. Watch your alignment. Oh, so what, what Giancarlo did is he created a stroke with dots in InDesign. Does everybody know how to do that? And you can set your stroke to either split the frame, go outside the frame, or go inside the frame. Okay? So just keep that in mind if you don't know how. Did I miss anything else? No. Okay. Hopefully we helped you, Giancarlo. Um, so I'm going to close this up. And let whoever is ready here. Uh, these are the thumbnails. These are the menu refs. And did we? These are today's. Who didn't do it? Let's just make sure we get yours and pull it down. Who still hasn't done theirs yet? So, Annie, I think this yours is up here, right? Mm -hmm. So come on up and tell us about yours, and uh, we'll keep on going. No. Uh, all right. So um, my idea is to create a seafood restaurant, very high-end, very luxurious, and uh, very special. Uh, this is it fictitious? Is, well, it, is, it, is there a real restaurant like this, or you're making no, it up? No, I'm making it up. Uh -huh. And it will be called Swords and Tails. Um, it will be located out in the ocean. So not in the harbor or like on the pier, but out in the middle of the of the ocean, basically. Um, I wrote down just an address in Santa Barbara for like an office or something. I don't know. Can't really put an address to it. And uh, um, yeah, so they will provide boat trips 
out to the restaurant from uh, the harbor in Santa Barbara. Um, and it will be very expensive, um, not just a regular like seafood restaurant that anyone can go to. You have to actually, um, I don't know, uh, make some good money to uh, to go here, or just decide that this month or this half year is like one big event uh, to so go out here. Guacamole. Something like that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so I wrote down that the target market is middle-aged, wealthy adults, and also travelers, because it can be one of those things that like, people from all around the world come here just to experience this restaurant. Um, so it will, well, the goal is obviously to make it really famous all over the world and just have people from everywhere come and visit. And my idea is to make it feel like a lost and lonely island. So you come out there and it's like castaway basically. And so the menu will be presented in bottles, like a message in the bottle. And let's see. I think, yeah, I have some fonts here. Uh, I'm not sure at, at all what I want to use yet. But <clears throat> since I want the menu to be like a message in the bottle, it will be like old paper, uh, like natural brown. And then I think like I want it to look like just ink, like black ink on paper, but more fancy than just a regular type. So I don't, I don't know if this will work. I'll, um, I'll look that up more and see what I can find and here's some ideas like this is kind of um, how I want the menu and I also just put up some sketches that I did about how the menu could be presented so like here it will go like I don't know if it will be like a bar throughout the restaurant and you can just go and pick up the menus. So it's a stream of water floating in the bottle? Yeah. Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> and I didn't really... I made a new uh, design brief, actually, but I forgot to upload it okay. because I didn't include the uh, cooler colors, uh -huh. just the one down there, but I have more. Okay. And I also found a lot of pictures um, they inspired me that I don't have in here. <coughs> but I that's... think you have time to still load it. Oh, but it's it. it's home on my computer. Well, I, and think I don't. We'll have time tonight. I'm not sure when it will be available. Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, can you go back to your type page for a second? Mm -hmm. So Annie clearly investigated type, and I would put money on the fact that line one and line two and line four are not those fonts, right? Mm -hmm. I'd win the bet, right? Yeah. Okay, so the reason why those fonts look exactly the same is you probably downloaded them from DeFont, mm -hmm. and which are free downloadable fonts, and that's no problem, and they sh look terrific when you PDF them and you look at them on your own computer where the font is loaded. But because they're free fonts, they are not postscript fonts. So if you want them to look good on somebody else's computer or print properly, you can, um, once you've worked with them on your computer, you will resave your file a second time, mm -hmm. rename your file with the suffix outline.pdf or AI or InDesign or whatever. Mm -hmm. And convert your fonts to outline. Do you know how to do that? No. no? Okay. Can you pull up InDesign for me, please? Yeah. Okay. And when you pull up InDesign, uh, make a new page and type your title for me, please. And then just 
pick a font, <coughs> type it, pick a font, make it big, and we'll do it together. This works exactly the same in Illustrator as it does in InDesign. And what happens is, is if you have a font, um, if you have a font that isn't a PostScript font, like not an Adobe font, um, but something from Defont, it's great to get, I'm coming closer just to read this, not to tell you, I, I mean just to record it. Um, so what you do is you uh, go back to your selection tool. You don't want to be in your type tool. So your box is active. You go up to type and you select create outlines about halfway down almost. It's thinking about it. <laughs> and you select create outlines and what it does is it converts your font from type, you cannot edit it, to a vector graphic. And right now, like if you take the white arrow, the direct selection tool, and you grab the bottom blue dot on, click off of everything. Yeah. And now grab the bottom corner of the ampersand, the and sign. Yeah, the bottom corner and just yank it down. Doesn't matter. Just yank. Click and yank. Pull, 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 pull. Just there. Surface? Let go. Yep. Okay. Now it's a vector graphic. So you can manipulate the type. So for example, if um, Annie decided to use the title Swords and Tails, and she decided to take um, the L and delete it and turn it into a tail, or she decided to take uh, the points uh, to the uppercase D, the ascending D, and turn it into a sword handle like a pirate sword mm -hmm. handle, you could. Mm -hmm. You could take that vector and, and change the shape of the letters. Okay? And then the font will look like it's supposed to. Yeah? I was looking for open face fonts like Caslon, and I noticed there are lend free. Right. That's right. Why is that? Because Adobe wants to make money. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can I get look-alikes. If I take the filled by that type and um, simply do an outline, will that be enough to give me the look I want? Well, if you want Adobe Caslon, you'll have to buy it. If you want a font similar, I find a similar serif font. Adobe Caslon's pretty Times Romanish. You know, it's pretty yeah. Adobe Garamundish. Uh, it's very, it's very predictable. Um, it does, I'm not saying it's not elegant. It's just predictable. Yeah. Um, it probably comes with your Adobe software. And I would not, if you have a lot of body copy, do not use Defont. Use Defont for headline fonts where it's a single word and you want to yeah, tinker with it. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Um, it can be a very elegant font. Yes. Sometimes, you know, very thin. Beautiful. And, I agree. Yeah. I agree. But, uh, I was very disappointed to find out. You yeah. have to buy it. No, I agree. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yes. Okay, so Annie, thank you for that. Let's go back to your menu now. Okay, so, um, so do you, so you have, uh, let's go to your sketches, which are great thinking out loud. I think sketching, thinking out loud like that is great. Um, so I see that you have like an aged piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Is that one of your thoughts to like yeah. burn edges and yeah. stain it and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff? Okay. Um, that's a cool idea. The interesting thing about a message in a bottle is you got to remember to bind it really tight. Otherwise, it never gets out of the bottle. Right? Anybody ever tried to put something in a bottle and can't get it out because it grew too big for the neck? Yeah. So you got to think about how you bind it. Yeah. I'll probably have like a rather than uh, something I can. I don't know, something that's already fixed size, so you can't really make it bigger or smaller. Right. Well, okay, so I saw some of your design refs, which you kind of said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Because my one super long scroll from my menu is only mm -hmm. two pages. Yeah. Okay. So here's where your creativity is going to matter to me. So you're going to, if you're stuck on a menu in a bottle, because I... Like the idea of it floating by a table is pretty nifty, right? Yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just saying maybe use like some of the picture in the bottle, something that's like thicker, like some smaller too. It's not, you don't have to be really designing it. Right, right, right. Your the type of bottle you choose is mm -hmm. going to be important. On your table, you might have additional menu items. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a bar menu. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You might have a dessert menu. You might have a letter that gets delivered to the diners of how this experience came about. Yeah. I mean, I understand your menu might be two pages, but you get to decide creatively mm -hmm. how you embellish it into something bigger if that's what you stick with. Yeah. For your approach. I was thinking about maybe having like smaller and bigger bottles, like smaller for appetizers and then one big for uh, the main course and then like dessert and drinks and uh, is it in a hut or a building or a I'm not completely sure yet. Um, it'll probably be like a restaurant with like I still want it to be like open, like you can feel that you're out in like nowhere. So maybe glass walls or I don't know. How do we get there? Uh, by boat. And how do we get to the boat? Uh, the company provides boat trips there. And they also have like um, a place where you can put your own boat if you want to go there uh, by yourself. More thoughts? Brief or yeah, on her menu idea or her brief or her concept or questions for what her restaurant's like or why we're gonna make it our vacation destination when we live in. Where are you from, Sweden? Yeah. Okay. What town? Um, Örebro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to say that for me, okay? Me. Yeah. Örebro. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, nice. Yeah. So why we make it a destination from your hometown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, so we'll look forward to more. We'll look forward to how you develop this. You know, with the burned menu, it makes me think it's vintage-y. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder, I, I like the castaway idea, but then I wonder if it's going to be super uber clean, mm -hmm. like, yeah, simple, that's simple, one thing that I'm a little bit unsure of yet because I want it to be like a really luxurious and high-end restaurant, but at the same time I want it to feel like a like old and lost place. So I want to like combine that somehow, um, like so vintage but modern. So start um, pulling up Pinterest. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd probably do. Yeah, that might that might be. You start grabbing your images and that'll help. Would, uh, would uh, the theme for like Atlantis kind of fit with that to some degree? A, a theme Atlantis. of what? The theme, the theme of Atlantis. Oh. Because it's kind of like underwater cast off the sun. Yeah. It also has that luxuriousness to it, mm -hmm. too, being like in an old school, you know, ruins and whatnot. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. That could be like a good theme to follow as well. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to think like more of how I actually want it because I'm still very yeah, not sure Probably about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say you can also use like the more wide mouth jars mm -hmm. and you can paint on those. Like you can put like a little stamp of a boat or something. Mm -hmm. That way it has a wide mouth and yeah. it still has like an elegance to it. Yeah. You can fit like a bigger menu in there. Definitely. Just put some random Ziploc bags and take them off the boat. <laughs> Well, yeah. your bottle is going to be part of the part of the message. Mm -hmm. um, so start grabbing ideas of things that feel like this mood, and that'll help you shape it. I yeah. Think. Okay. It's great. Who wants to go next? Who hasn't gone? I'm not going to pick you guys. So if you want feedback, you got to go up yourselves. Okay. Go ahead, Sarah. It's great. Is yours up there? Yes. Okay. Very bottom. Very bottom. I just feel like a small child in this chair every time. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking of, oh, hello there, mouse. I was thinking of something based on, like, Sweet Lolita fashion, uh -huh. which is um, my summary right here, a subset of this Japanese subculture based on Victoria-era clothing. And it's mostly about modesty and material and like cute silhouettes, like cute animals, cute colors, that kind of stuff. 
and I thought that would be a fun thing to base it on and like have that idea and go with a whole cute theme and like do a bakery or a sweet shop kind of angle because that subculture is very focused on cutes and sweets. And I did like some basic overly cutesy research to get more of an idea of what I wanted. Well that helps paint a picture for us. Yeah. And so who's your target market? Can you go back to that page? So who's your target market then? Like the audience that like this stuff are like women and men in like their 20s and 30s kind of thing. Uh-huh. I need to go back. Weird. Um, like when I was looking it up for more information, it was mostly like like people in that age group, women in Japan and in America and England and so on. So there's a cute culture. Yeah, it's a it, it's one subset of a very big thing. Okay. That and what's the culture Japan. called? Lolita. Lolita. Has d different like ideas, but I was going for the sweet, which is like so. It's what you not babyish. It's cute. Cute. Okay. It's based on like a, a cute aesthetic. Uh huh. I got it. And I like what what would be cute would like an animal shaped menu, like a little rabbit head menu, that can open from the side, and it'll have like pictures and writing and stuff in it. And what's the restaurant called? Lolita? Um, not Lolita. I, w I didn't have a name when I first put this together, but I was thinking like sugar or suga. Yeah. Kind of like a play on like how the Japanese pronounce the word sugar. Uh-huh. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Especially with like the rabbit menu. Usually I can keep talking, but I'm nervous. <laughs> You're doing good. Um, okay, so you like the idea of cute rabbits. Yeah, right? I thought like with the bow and it would be like pretty small in your hands. You could flip it open. And it's not Hello Kitty-ish. No. No, okay. And I went for like, I was trying to find like the right kind of balance of type that was kind of feminine and cute, but still kind of nice to look at. Uh-huh. Along with like classic, because like the whole fashion thing is subset like on Victorian era clothing and the frills and the extra skirts underneath kind of deal. So I wanted like cute and classic to like meet comfortably together. And was it, is it going to look like a parlor? Um, I was thinking like more, more current kind of cafe bakery kind of feel. Like I sketched out what I was thinking like in my sketchbook. Do you want to pull that up? I downloaded it. Well, I don't have oh, that. Oh, it's not here. No, I did that like last week okay. while you were talking about it during the other briefs. Uh -huh. But yeah, I was thinking like, because it's a pretty popular like sub thing, like people are still doing it today and it makes a lot of money and that kind of stuff. Can you pull pictures up of it besides what you had in your brief, like of what um, a restaurant would look like? My color palettes. Is it, are other people familiar with this? That's why I included the okay. included the descriptions the and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and cotton um, candy colors, sweet colors, yeah. pastels. Like that's a general kind of color palettes that they use. Uh huh. I thought that would be kind of cool. This one's so um, small. There used to be a tea party. I was just gonna say, I was just looking. Like right. a tea party, like kind of bakery. Is that what she's going for? Is that what you're going for? Like there's a tea thing. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be a place in Ojai that had tea parties, and it was very Victorian looking. Anybody know that place? And then um, there is an ice cream parlor in New York. It's like uh, written up. It's, I think it's called Serendipity. Do you, will you Google that? All right. Like this is what the fashion usually looks like. So very Victorian doll looking. Yeah, it's about modesty and femininity. Okay. Serendipity. Yeah, New York, ice cream. Try that. Yeah, there you go. See that big, yeah. It's like near the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And um, you go in, and that big clock, the one next to the Sunday on the right, that's what the interior oh, looks okay. like. Lots of, is that, is that like it? No. That wasn't what I was picturing, but it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You don't have to like it. <laughs> I'm like, it's cool, but it's, it's not It's all I was anymore. thinking of when I was thinking of parlors and suites, and they're famous. They, they get incredibly, just like the 
after theater crowd for ice cream and um, <coughs> I think it was called Tottingham Court, oh hi, I think it closed, see if that shows up. Tottingham Court? Yeah, I think so. Oh hi? Yeah. I don't know how to spell O J A I. And I think it was TT, not DD. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I don't think they exist anymore. Not really giving me much. No, I I'll take this though. <laughs> but that was that would be that would work, right? No, I'm just being remote. sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, I failed at that one. I apologize. You got it right with the other one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sort of. Well, I was just trying to think. You might. There also used to be a place called Lums in Beverly Hills. It, that would show up for you if you type Lums. It doesn't exist, but it's that sweet uh, uh -huh, Beverly Hills, and you'll get vintage photos. Yeah, try that. And um, we got people. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, type of ice cream. Like, that's what I wanted more people. How long ago was it around? Um, before you were born. Um, yeah, I thought maybe they'd show you the interior of the place. It was striped, um, it had pink and white stripes, uh, like hot pink and soft pink stripes, and it had parlor chairs, and, um, and it was very sweet. It was just a sweet environment. Yeah. Not just the food they served. <laughs> I get what you're talking about, yeah, though. Yeah. Um, well, this will be fun. Let's go back to your brief then. Um, okay. <laughs> so you've got your color palettes picked, and your your. So what's the dining experience like when we walk in there then? Like, you what's just, on the menu? Like I started writing that down here. Like it's mostly sweets and tea kind of thing, with, like. If you show up in the kind of attire that it's based on, you will get like a discount. Oh, and, that's cute. Yeah. Well, it's based on the subculture. Well, I was going to say, so it becomes a cult thing. It's like when you used to go watch the movie. Rocky Horror. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Still right? Still around. Still around. It's, it's still around. It still happens on Halloween. It's, okay. So it's still a cult. So it's a cult thing. So that's kind it's of a fun. a cultural thing, yeah. That's like, great. The dining experience must be like very comfortable and welcoming. And like you can sit down on like, like what I drew was like kind of like. I went to a, like a cafe restaurant kind of thing. That's what popped in my head, and it was, like, cushioning, like booth kind of cushions. Yeah. Against the wall with like tables in front of it and soft pillows and stuff. So I picture very elaborate Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. yeah, Alice yeah. in Wonderland. I was thinking like the something like the Mad Hatter. You know, it really has this party, the tea party kind of like high noon thing. Yeah. And um, those pretty pin cushion uh, upholstered things, big overstuffed. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. 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 Like a gumdrop forest desk kind of thing, like <laughs> yeah. 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 Stuff like that. That's like, I'm going like for a mixture of that and more modern yeah. stuff, right so on. it's not like. Ew, this is old. No. <laughs> walk in. There's a there's a manufacturer called McKinsey Childs. You can Google them too. Now or later? Uh, try now. Right. They have uh, a, a furniture Lots. and accessories. Um, M A C M A C McKinsey. I'm looking for it. McKinsey spelled right up there for you. And then Childs. Yeah, there you go. It'll correct it. There you go. Okay. And you see that, like, you see their upholstered cushion chairs, like the striped ones or the one above. Yeah. Is that kind of similar? Um, sort of. I have an idea, so it's fine. All right, you have an idea. I'm just head. a picky <laughs> old badger. Okay, you can find it, right? Yeah, I have an already have an idea. Okay. That's what I think. But yeah, like, the only. This mouse is really sensitive. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking of, like, how is I going to achieve, like, the rabbit and, like, keep it stitched together 
opening it. How are you gonna design it? He's like, I had an idea of like opening from the side. Yeah. So his face opens up and his ears are double. Like I was just gonna have the ears on one side. And so how do you bind it? Like, should I sew the binding or staple it? Because I was thinking of sewing at most. And is it multiple pages? Well, it's going to be eight pages. Like, I'm going with the eight pages you gave us. Well, you could have the back of the menu be the ears sticking up, and the front of the menu could be uh, the circle of okay. the face. Okay, that's good. And the back of the menu is all the die cut stuff, and the front of the menu is just the face keeps opening, and it's round shaped like the face. Okay. Is that what you kind of mean? Um, like, I had these sketches more or less, like, because I just had, like, the ears on the front, but it would be better if they were on the back. Yeah, if they're on the back. I like that better. Yeah. Because I already, like, have the menu, like, drawn out on my computer. You do? And generally okay. designed, but I was, like, unsure where to go. Okay. Because I have like, everything kind of rolling forward. Yeah, I would start where your, the back of it is your cardboard platform for okay. your menu. And then your pages on top are um, are just that manageable shape without ears on the page. Right. Well, so. I wasn't like I wasn't gonna have ears on every page, but the, having it on the back is better than the front. Right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Thank you. It's a free service. I, have. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted critique. That's why I was like, me next, please. Good. Any other thoughts for anybody here? No. Yeah. So what kind of food are you gonna? Like mostly desserts. Like desserts, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like macaroons and cinnamon twists and fruit meringues kind of yeah, stuff. Like cakes. Yeah, 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 like there's yeah, miniature yeah. cakes and stuff. Cool. Okay. And house teas. We're so hungry when we're like. Terrible. Alright. Okay. Are you gonna be organizing your menu items or at least like the pages by like, for instance, like a cake section or like a tea section yeah. or like a macaroon section? Or yeah. Cool. Each page is going to be a separate, a different thing with like a drawing next to it that give you an idea. Right yeah, because I was going to say like, you know, you being with only tea and dessert, it's kind of limiting unless if you actually go into the specifics of, you know, details. Yeah, so. there's a lot of specifics. Yeah. I've dug in. Good. Right on. Thank you. Okay, so we look forward to more progress. Okay, next we have uh, 20 minutes. Anybody else wants to go next? Yeah. Okay. So is there nobody else who wants to critique or rub or more feedback? Uh,